so <clears throat> um, yesterday we had like just finished this, I think. Um, and then the bell rang and I did not assign anything from this to do at home. You just had to do, you had to start the other notes. Okay, so we're gonna kind of backtrack. We're gonna go back to this. We have this line right here. I'm gonna keep drawing this. This is a tangent line. And this is a radius that's hitting the tangent line at the point of tangency. And do you guys remember what angle that makes? It makes a 90 degree angle, okay? And then over on this side, here is another tangent line and another radius that's running and it hits the tangent line at the point of tangency, so it makes another 90 degree angle. So when you guys see these pictures of circles that are being drawn, anytime they have a point that looks like it's in the center and it has a letter next to it, um, that's very intentional because that's how you name a circle. So they would call this circle over here, they would call it circle C. It's like named for the point that's in the center. This would be called circle O, this would be called circle O. So anytime you see a letter that looks like it's in the center of the circle, it is, and that point is considered to be the center of the circle. So over here, even though they didn't draw a point there, there would be a point and it would be at what you would call center C. So over here, when they put an O right there, um, you can assume, oh, that's the center of the circle. And when you have a point here at the center and then a point over here at the edge, you can assume that that's your radius. Thank you, yeah. It was after the toner came in. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we have two 90 degree angles on each side of this. And then this right here is a four sided shape. And does anyone remember how many degrees are in a four sided shape? You might think like a square. 360, yeah, a four-sided shape has 360 degrees in it. So a three-sided shape is a triangle. Triangles have how many degrees? 180. A four-sided shape would be like a square or a rectangle. Those have 360 degrees. This is not a square or a rectangle. It looks a little bit more like a kite, um, but it still has 360 degrees in it, even if it's a different shape. So if this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees and we're trying to figure out what X is, how would we do that? Yeah, we're going to subtract the other ones from 360 so we can figure out what it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so 63... And I think that's all the examples for that one, yeah. So at this point, you can go back to the assignment. And in the assignment, they have a tangent line here. And we have circle L. And circle L, if this is the middle and this is a point on the edge, that means this is definitely a radius. And so that means what is the angle right here? It's a 90 degree angle. It's a right angle. Okay. Um, so if we have two sides that are given in a right triangle, how could we find the third side? Yeah, 7 squared plus 19 squared equals x squared. So that's the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and then they also tell us if the measure of J, K, L, okay, so from J to K to L, J, K, L is this part right here. If this is 20 degrees, they want you to find the measure of J, L, K. J, L, K is this angle right here. They want you to find the other missing angle. 
So you have enough information to do both of those things to find X and to find the missing angle. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Okay, and then if we look at the other one, here is your tangent line. Again, we have a circle named circle L. We have a tangent line. We have a radius. So here is our 90 degree angle. Now here, X is just this part right here. So we might have to come back to this when you guys are all done and see what you got for the actual X value. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this entire length right here, from here all the way down, I'm going to call that entire length Y. So X is just this piece up here, and we'll come back once you guys have all worked on that problem and we'll figure out what just X is. But how could I find that entire length? Pythagorean theorem. So if I set up the Pythagorean theorem on this problem, what would I do? Anybody? Equals KL squared, which is what I'm calling Y. Okay. And then they told us the measure of JKL is 22.6. So J to K to L. So JKL is this right here. That is 22.6. Um, and so they want the measure of JLK. JLK is this one right here. So that's the one they want you to find. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to solve both of those problems. We'll come back in a little bit and we'll figure out what X is. Anybody want to share what they got for X um, on number 15? Twenty point two four eight. I heard that from a few people. Anyone get something different? 22.248, okay. Uh, what do we get for the missing angle? 70. Everyone get 70 for the missing angle? Yes? The missing angle? So we know this is 90, and then we know the whole triangle is 180. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, on the other side, what did we get for Y? We got 26, okay. Now, if Y is 26, did anyone figure out what X is? It doesn't look like it based on the picture. So the picture is, um, in geometry, they say it's not drawn to scale, so that based on the picture, it looks like the answer's wrong, but it's still right. Um, so it looks like the answer's wrong, but you did get it right, even if the measurements don't make sense. Anyone figure out what the X value is? It's not 13. You have to use a clue somewhere else in the picture to help you. Is it 16? It's 16. So how do we know it's 16? Because the radius is 10. So the radius over here is 10, which means the radius here must be 10 as well. <clears throat> and then we know the whole length is 26. And so the X value must be 16 to make the whole length 26. So it's very common in geometry for them to, uh, to make one diagram and then reuse it over and over because it like loosely represents a picture, but they change the numbers all the time, uh, which is why they typically say like, unless they're telling you that that picture is a perfect example of it, just assume it's not drawn to scale. So, uh, for example, uh, one of the problems that we did over here, this angle is probably not 63 degrees. Like, these look like they're probably 90, but that angle to me looks, I don't know, probably not 63 degrees, though, is my guess. Um, things like that where you're going to see things that look like they're probably not right but this looks a little bit more like 13 and 13 than it does like 10 and 16. so when you see pictures it's okay if they look a little bit off uh, because that's pretty common in geometry for you to see things that are not drawn to scale
Okay, we're going to look at the next part of these notes. Um, circle conjecture 8 and circle conjecture 9. So we've had a couple uh, circle conjectures that are not as common. Um, we had circle conjecture 6 and 7. Um, circle conjecture 6, if we were to go back and label this one, we would say like, meh, this one like is gets used sometimes this one's a little bit more rare doesn't get used very often keep it in mind but if you're not going to come upon it very often uh circle conjecture seven is like eh, you, you you see it i guess it's not as rare as circle conjecture six but like it's not super common um, circle conjecture eight is a little bit more, uh, not circle, circle conjecture nine is going to be a little bit more common. Circle conjecture eight is very, very common. It's going to be another one of those that we see all the time. So I'd put a star next to that one. We're going to look out for that one. That one's going to be, um, a really common thing that we're going to see in problems and we're going to want to get used to. So with this one, that's okay. Uh, if an angle is formed by two secants, um, and if you look at your notes from the first page, if you look at that picture, a secant line cuts through a circle. It hits the circle in two points. That's what a secant line is. So if a secant line or even two tangent lines intersect outside a circle, then the measure of this angle right here, and I'm going to use my, I'm going to use two different colors so I can see it. Here's one arc, and then here's another arc that make that angle. Hey, what's up? Yeah, your notes. Yeah, you need them for the practice today. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so this is the bigger arc. This is the smaller arc. And then this right here is the angle. So the formula is the angle equals the big arc minus the little arc. Divided by two. The angle equals the big arc minus the little arc divided by 2. They'll give you two pieces of information in there, and then you'll find the third piece of information. So sometimes they'll tell you to solve for the angle, and they'll give you both of the arcs. Sometimes they'll give you uh, the angle in one of the arcs and they'll ask you to find the other arc. Um, they'll always give you like two pieces of information. Somehow, somehow in the picture you're going to find two pieces of information. So if we look at this one, we can see the big arc is 90. Here's the big arc. The big arc is 90. The little arc is 20. So to solve for x in this one, we're going to say x equals 90 minus 20 divided by 2. 90 minus 20 divided by 2. And what is 90 minus 20? 70. So 70 divided in half is 35. Okay. All right, now uh, problem 18, you're going to think that they only gave you one piece of information because there's only one number written down, but they actually hid a second piece of information in the picture. So from here to here, this is the first arc. This is the big one. And that first arc is 240 degrees, okay? That's the big arc. The little arc is this one right here, and the little arc is the rest of the circle. 
So if the big arc is 240, what's the little arc? 120, it's the rest of the circle at 120. Okay, so we're gonna say x is big arc minus little arc divided by two. 240 minus 120 is 120. 120 divided by two is 60. Okay. This one, they gave us two pieces of information, but one of the pieces of information isn't the information we needed. Okay, so 360 minus 120 minus 65 is what we're going to do because we got to find this arc over here and we don't have it. So I'm going to do 360 minus 120 minus 65. Okay, so this arc is 175. Okay, so big arc minus little arc. So the angle is big arc minus little arc divided by 2. So 175 minus 65 is 110. 110 divided by 2 is 55. Okay. So in these examples, we have a few combinations here. So in example 17, this is a secant line and this is a secant line. In example 18, we have a tangent line and a tangent line, so that's why the picture looks a little bit different. In example 19, they have one secant line right here and one tangent line over here. And that's why all the pictures look slightly different because they're showing you the different ways that this angle on the outside of the circle could be formed. But all three of those ways still use that same circle conjecture, number eight, big arc minus little arc divided by two. Okay, does that make sense? Reasonable? Okay, let's look at circle conjecture nine. So circle conjecture nine says, if an angle is formed by two chords, so two chords are inside the circle and the angle is gonna be inside the circle, if an angle is formed by two chords intersecting inside a circle, then the measure of the angle is, the angle is going to be um, arc 1 plus arc 2 divided by 2. So I'm going to show you where the arcs are. So this is the angle. And these are vertical angles. Remember, these are going to be the same because these are called vertical angles. So this is the angle that we're talking about, and both of them are the same. Arc 1 and arc 2. It doesn't matter which one's bigger or smaller because we're adding them together, so we don't care what the sizes are. So add the two arcs together, divide them by two, and then you get the angle in between them. Yeah. Circle conjecture seven. Um, it specifically deals with right angles, and it only has one tangent line. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, number 20. So this one, we have our two arcs. So we have this arc over here, and we have this arc over here. And the angle between them is right here at X. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the two angles, 70 and 116. We're going to add them together and divide by 2. And that's going to give us the angle. So 
So 70 plus 116, that's 186. Divided by 2 is 93. Okay. Uh, in question 21, they decided to mix things up a little bit. So they gave us the measurement of an arc. And then they did not give us the measurement of this arc. So we're going to say the measurement of one arc plus not the measurement of another arc divided by 2 equals the measurement of the angle. And we have to solve for this x. So the first thing I want to do is I don't want this problem to be a fraction anymore. I don't want that fraction to be there. It makes the problem more difficult. So how could I get rid of the 2 on the bottom of the fraction? Yeah, it says divide by 2, so if I want to undo divide by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. So times 2 times 2. What is 120 times 2? 240. So 240 equals 160 plus x. Okay. Uh, how do I get rid of the 160? Subtract it. Okay. 240 take away 160 80 is that 80 okay so 80 so now if we want to make sure our math works out 160 plus 80 divided in half should be 120 160 plus 80 divided in half should be 120, and it is. Okay? Uh, on number 22, they mix things up again. So this arc and this arc that they did not give us should equal this angle that they also did not give us. See how they gave us the wrong angle? Okay, so they gave us the 139. That is not this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look right here. I'm going to cover this up. That makes a straight line. How many degrees are in a straight line? 180. So if this is 139, what's the rest? 41. Okay, if that's 139... This is 180 minus 139, which is 41. Does that make sense? 41. So this is 41. OK. So now I can say, let's go ahead and add these two arcs together. 40 plus x divided by 2 equals the angle. OK? And now we can do it like the last problem. So what is our first step? Okay, times 2. All right, 2 times 41 is 82. 40 plus x. I want to get the x alone. Take away the 40. So x equals 42. And that makes a lot of sense. If we have an arc of 40 and an arc of 42, then the number in between them would be 41. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. So now we can go ahead and trade this out and grab our assignments. So we have two options. We have the angle on the outside of the circle where we're going to do big arc minus little arc divided by 2. And we have the angle on the inside of the circle where we're going to do arc 1 plus arc 2 divided by 2. Two different, two different types of problems. So go ahead and start on 17, 18, 19. Uh, those are just straight up numbers. Those are pretty easy to do. And then we'll do one of the next three together since those are lots and lots of variables. And we'll just make sure that those are comfortable. So start off with 17, 18, 19, and then we will do one of these together. Okay, 
And so what do we actually have to work with for number 22? We start with what? Mm -hmm. I think I did my colors backwards. Did I do my colors backwards? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to do big arc minus little arc divided by 2, right? Okay, so I'm going to say big arc minus little arc. And since my little arc is not just a number, it's an expression, I have to put it in parentheses. And I only have to do that because I'm subtracting, and I'm subtracting more than one thing. So anytime you subtract more than one thing, you should put it in parentheses to make sure that you actually subtract each of those things that you're subtracting. So it's a good idea to put it in parentheses to make sure you actually do that. So I've got big arc minus little arc divided by 2 equals the angle. Now, I don't need to do my distribution yet, or I could. I guess I could do that as one of the steps. But I probably also don't really want this to be a fraction. So what else could I be doing as maybe like one of the first steps? I'm going to combine like terms. And what else could I do? I'm going to multiply by 2 to get rid of that fraction. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to times 2 times 2, get rid of this. So 2 times 43 is 86, OK? Um, the 18 plus 6 can just be dropped down. And then what do I get when I put the negative in there? Negative 7x minus 8. And then what do I get when I combine like terms? 11x minus what? Minus 2? OK. And then from there, we can go ahead and solve. So if so, there's something called a minor arc and a major arc. A minor arc is less than half a circle and a major arc is more than half a circle. So when you write a minor arc, you only use two letters, and you, when you want a major arc, you use more than two letters. So you can see this one, see how it uses three letters? That means they want more than half the circle. This one, two letters, they want less than half the circle. So since this says KM, that means they have to be talking about the part that I did in green. They cannot be talking K to M all the way around here, because if they wanted all the way around here, they would have had to use three letters to show that they wanted the big part. Does that make sense? OK. So over here, T to W, sorry, T to W to U, that is more than half the circle. So they couldn't say T U because then people would have gone this way. So since they wanted you to go the, the long way, they had to say T to W to U so that you would know to go the long way. Does that make sense? OK. All right. So I'm going to give you guys some time to work on finishing these up. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get started on the other packet. OK? So if you look at the beginning of the assignment, it starts off with circle conjecture 10. So circle conjecture 10 just says if you have um, two segments, so two tangent lines um, that meet at a point outside the circle, then those two lines are going to be equal measurements. So if we look at number 1, if this is a length of 12, then this is a length of 12. If this is a length of 5.2, then this is a length of 5.2. If this is a length of 8.5, then this little piece right here is a length of 8.5. Uh, the instructions are asking us to find the perimeter of each polygon. So we have to find the length all the way around. We know the length of this whole side is 18.4. We know the length of this piece right here is 
So how could we find this part right here? Subtract it. Okay, so 18.4 minus 8.5. Okay, so 9.9. .9. Okay. And then what is this part right here? It's going to be 9.9 .9 as well. Okay. And then what am I going to do to find the perimeter? I'm going to add them all up. Okay. So 12 times 2, 5.2 times 2, 8.5 times 2, 9.9 .9 times 2. Anyone else get the same thing? 71.2? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got my perimeter is 71.2. Okay, so that's going to help you on question two and three. So go ahead and work on those. They're pretty simple. All right, what do the markings mean um, on four and six? Because the markings are the same. So what is congruent? What, but what measurement? Is it, an, is it a degree measure? Is it a length? So they're talking about the arc. Are they talking about the measurement, like the angle measurement of the arc, or are they talking about the length of the arc? They're talking about the length of the arc. So they're saying right here, when they drew these two lines, they're saying that the length of this arc, this length right here, and this length right here, they're telling you that those two lengths are exactly the same length. They're identical lengths. That's what they're telling you. And we, if we look in our notes at circle conjecture 11, we know that corresponding arcs are only congruent when the chords are congruent. And a chord is a line that's inside of a circle. A line that's inside of a circle, it touches the circle at two edges. One edge over here, one edge over there. It touches a circle in two points. So if the arcs are congruent, they would be congruent because this chord was congruent to this chord. That's the only way that the two arcs would be congruent. So if those two chords are congruent, that means they're the same length. And what could we do to solve for x? Set them equal to each other. So 2x plus 3 equals 8x. Same thing we're going to do for the other picture. It, the picture looks slightly different, but it's, it's doing the exact same circle conjecture. So they're showing you that this arc is the exact same length as this arc. And the only way that those arcs are going to be the same length is because this chord created an arc that was that length and this chord created another arc that was the exact same length. And so that means that those two lengths, if they're the same, then if you want to solve for x, you just set those two expressions equal to each other and you can solve for x.
Yeah. No. Um. Yeah, so as far as today goes, I want you to have one through six completely done. Fair? One through six completely done? Okay.